Hello y'all! It's been over a month, but now I'm finally doing my vlog for the Kyoto Taikai. I have done Iaido for 14 years, specifically Muso Jikirin Eishinru Iaido, which I will now just call Eishinru Iaido because that's a bit of a mouthful and I don't want to say that every single time. The Taikai is kind of a two-day event. The actual Taikai is on Sunday, but on Saturday is the party. The party is the 17th. I always go to the Taikai with just enough time to go to the party, maybe relax a little bit before, and then do the Taikai Sunday, and that's all. However, around Hotel Tozankaku, which is the party location, the main event hotel, um, there are various interesting locations that I've always wanted to see but never really planned the time to see them. So for this year's Taikai, I decided to leave a little bit early, actually not a little bit, very early, so I can get there early enough and check them out. Day 1. On the 17th, I left at around 9 o'clock a.m. to go from Kakamigahara and arrive in Kyoto around noonish. I had contacted a friend of mine from America who was coming to Kyoto just for the Taikai. And, well, actually, yeah, he was coming to Kyoto just for the Taikai. We met up outside my hotel and we went and checked everything out. The first place we went to was Toyokuni Jinja. Now, this shrine houses one of the swords from Tolkien Rambu named Honebami. And I personally play Token Rambu. There's Token Rambu here, here. Um, you can't see it, but there's more Token Rambu up above my head. So I was pretty sh thrilled to go and see for the first time one of the shrines that houses one of these famous swords. A sword that's famous enough to be anthropomorphized in 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 Token Rambu. Actually. Actually, I have him right here. Ah! I saw the sword! It looked just like this! No, it didn't. While there, I got a clear file and a bookmark. And I especially love the bookmark because I don't have any fancy bookmarks here in Japan. I now use it in my Japanese manga because I've been reading more and more Japanese for practice. The clear file is a little bit unusual because even though it's a token Rambu themed item, there is no character on it. It's only the sword. Personally, I like this because you can buy anime or game goods anywhere, but only at the shrine can you get goods with the actual sword on it. I also happen to collect Goshuin. Ta-da! This is my Goshuin Cho, which I actually got at the base of Inuyama Jinja near Kakamigahara. So the Goshuin is doo -doo 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 -doo, right here. It's kind of unusual because it has a very flourishy, fancy style of calligraphy that you usually see at Buddhist shrines. Most Shinto shrines will have a more bare bones, basic look to it. Very, very simple. The stamps themselves are lovely, but the calligraphy tends to be a little more straightforward. And usually when you see a go to a shrine, or not a shrine, a temple, when you go to a temple, you'll see this kind of dynamic calligraphy. But at Toyokuni Jinja, this is the kind of calligraphy that was used for my Goshuincho. Or Goshuin, excuse me. Our next stop was Sanju San Gendo, which is probably the closest to the hotel. Now, I had kind of looked on Google Maps to try to figure out where we were going to go, and I knew that this was going to be kind of a big place, but I did not realize just how amazing it would be. It's huge. Like, really huge. I mean, the building. It's one building. It's not like um, Kiyomizudera, where you have a huge grounds with many, many shrines and temples and everything, but the building itself is massive. And the reason it's so massive is because it houses 1,001 statues of the Kanon. 1,001. And they're not little statues. They're pretty big. 
And in the middle of this, these 1001 Canon statues is one giant statue. Not as big as the one in Nara, but it's still massive and very impressive. And it's designed to highlight the many faces of this particular Buddha. You can stare at it for a very, very long time and continue to notice many little details like how many heads the Buddha has, all the various items. It's just kind of mind-blowing. If you're in this area near Hotel Tozenkaku, I highly recommend you go to this place. And of course, yes, I did get the Goshuin for Sanju San Yindo. It's right here. This one is for the next place that we went. Sadly, we did not spend very much time there, but our last stop was Chishakuin. It's a very lovely temple that supposedly houses a lot of art and has a beautiful garden. We checked out the garden and enjoyed seeing the hydrangeas, or ajisai in Japanese, but we were so very tired from walking around in the heat and Sanju Sangindo was huge. So we finally decided to just return back to the hotel and hang out in the lobby until it was time for the party. The party, or inkai, is a very relaxed occasion. I'm always a little bit nervous because I know I will be very, very popular. I don't know why, but everyone always wants to talk to me. They always make me sing. This year I sang Hotel California uh, because they do karaoke on the big uh, banquet stage. Please remember, it is a very informal event. In Japan, when you bust out the alcohol in a big group like this, it's kind of a chance for everyone to let loose Get to know each other and don't worry too much about stepping on any toes. I mean, you don't want to make a total ass of yourself. That wouldn't be good. But do have fun. Do talk to people. It's just a wonderful chance to make connections with these people that you don't get to see very often. I mean, I live in Japan and I don't get to see my Iaido friends in Kanto very often, except at big events like this. And if you're coming from America, to experience this event, then definitely, definitely try to get to know some people while you're here. As usual, the food was amazing. There's many, 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 many courses of various Japanese cuisine. And according to the hotel website, it changes with the seasons, but I'm only ever there in June for summer for the Taikai. So I will just assume that the site is not lying but I do enjoy the food. All that drinking and all that speaking to all the people in Japanese and in English too to help out my American friends really tests my Japanese, but it's a lot of fun. Day two. This is on June 17th. No, it is not. It was June 18th. Saturday was the 17th. On June 18th, I woke up bright and early to join everyone for the big breakfast in the same room that the banquet hall was held. The breakfast, like the banquet, is all Japanese cooking. And you get yudofu, which is like a metal bowl over a burner with tofu inside of it and some mushrooms. And it's yudofu is pretty much hot water and tofu. So it's boiled tofu. It's one of Kyoto's specialties. And normally, if you're in Kyoto having any kind of Kyoto specialty, it's insanely expensive. But this is included with the cost of staying at the hotel. So I got to enjoy yudofu. It was yummy. I like yudofu. Don't leave the spoon in the boiling water, though, and burn your hand like I did. That's stupid. As I was eating, a few more dishes were coming out, and I just enjoyed it. Unlike at the banquet, there wasn't a lot of chatting. I think a lot of people were hungover from drinking too much. A lot of people here are kind of weak against alcohol. I was okay. I was just sleepy. I'm not a morning person at all. After breakfast, I changed and at 8.30, we rode the bus to the Taikai location. The event itself was at Miyako Mese Conference Center, which is right across the street from Heian Jingu. Heian Jinja. Anyway, Heian Shrine! Once there, I went to the ladies' changing room and got dressed in my Monski and Hakama. For some reason, compared to last year, there were fewer people than normal. And I don't know why. 
we finished very, very, very early, and usually I go out to do Imbu right before lunch or right after lunch, but this year I did it well before lunch. That's actually a little bit concerning. I wonder if there was something else going on. For lunch, I sat with my friend from America, and I'll just call him Si-san from Chiba, and we talked a lot. I showed Si-san some Tubu region Iaido, particularly kata, the two-person kata, and afterwards we enjoyed watching the rest of the imbu. Some people do leave early, but I consider this a small chance, or I consider this a rare chance to sit back and enjoy, and enjoy Iaido from all around the nation, and from outside of Japan as well. We were not the only foreigners there. We did the group photo, and when I was all finished, I changed, and because I had work on Monday, I went home directly. I would like to say that's the end of the story, however, it isn't. Oh my god, I can't believe this happened, but whenever I was riding the regular train, I, oh, I rode the Shinkansen from Kyoto to somewhere, and then I switched to the normal train. So on my way to Gifu Station, I wanted to take a nap, but I didn't have a window seat, and I was balancing my Iaito between my knees and I was worried it would fall if I did fall asleep, so I decided unwisely to put it on the overhead rack, which worked beautifully. It didn't get damaged or anything, and I could sleep without worrying about it. However, I got off the station and went to the bathroom, and when I was arranging my luggage in my backpack to use the toilet, I realized, oh my god, I don't have my sword. I left my sword on the train! <laughs> and in a panic, I went to the station masters by... Well, I guess they're station masters. I don't know what their title is. Anyway, the station guys by the wickets, and in a kind of a panic, told them what happened. Thankfully, I still had my little train app that I... Why? Well, I don't have a cell phone. I had my train application open, that showed what line I was on and everything, so they could quickly call it in, and they had me fill out the paperwork to have it mailed to my home when it was found, and I went to my train, and I was kind of sad that it wasn't found, you know, within the 20 minutes I was kind of waiting for news. And the train had about five minutes before it actually left the station. So I was sitting there, and one of those station guys ran onto the train to announce to me that they got the call saying that my sword was found and it was safe, as far as they could tell, and that it would be mailed to my home. Well, paid on delivery. I had to pay for the shipping, but I consider the, like, 1,500 yen or so I paid when it arrived to be well worth it to have my, like, nine mon in my, god, Japanese, 90,000 yen sword brought home safely because I did something horribly stupid. So I had a wonderful weekend. I got to see an Yaido friend from America. I got to see a lot of awesome Yaido. I could see my Yaido friends from Kanto, from, well, Chubu, where I'm from, the Chubu region. I don't get to see them all the time either. And I had a fun misadventure that had a happy ending. And it was just a lot of fun. I'm so happy that, that, I went, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you like what you saw and you want to see more of my videos, please, you know, give me a thumbs up on the video. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. And if you have any comments or questions, please write them below, okay? So, see ya.